and for these uh, servants that have put themselves in this position to serve us in government. We just ask your blessing. We ask your wisdom. We ask your leadership. And we're truly thankful for all your many blessings that you've given to us through many years. Through our Lord and Savior, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. Amen. May I call this meeting to order? Started tonight. We got a uh, couple of consent agendas to do. We have a we have a regular commission meeting from 12 6 16 and a special commission meeting on 12 13 16. Uh, if anybody has a chance to look that over, any changes or need a motion to approve? Motion by Commissioner Thursday. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Lowry. All in favor say aye. Down the core park, and I think it looks. I think it looks nice. We've got it backfilled with some field dirt, and um, we'll get some irrigation, some grass growing soon. But uh, many things going on. Uh, any questions by any member? Bill jog the memories on uh, our workshop next week or our regular meeting, which will be a, a, a walking meeting. And yes, sir. Yeah, we're going to have a. Uh, we're going to meet at Billy Joe Rich deck. I think it's 4.30. I'll send your agenda packages out here next day or so. I'm pretty sure it's 4.30. And we'll have a walking meeting talking about the, the deck improvements, the gateway possibly on the 4th or 3rd, um, improvements to Reed Avenue traffic circulation, maybe 3rd Street traffic circulation. Then we'll go over to Core Park and have some discussion what we're doing over there and kind of discuss that general layout and what we're doing. So we'll start at Billy Joe Rich and we'll just kind of walk around downtown. Bill, I don't have any uh, questions. I got a couple of comments. It looks really good down there. We took the trees out. I think it looks nice down there. Uh, the promenade looks great. Uh, do, but my question is you've already seen two cars. I think this board needs to support you, and it may be you might want to temporarily put something up. already seen two cars on there what could happen in the next week or two no. we don't want somebody running off to the side of it that stuff right. hadn't been there long enough to really well, I know what I'm saying so uh, I feel that if you need to do something there we might want to go ahead and just put a temporary something up there until we have a meeting and then we can decide what we're going to do with more okay I can get with John we have a couple of cones down there with no parking there little eight frame signs so maybe we put a, uh, one of those barricades right there and you don't need to drop. At least temporarily until you... And I was afraid to make a connection to Ball Cell and have somebody flying down to where it is. If nothing even slows down from 98, uh, it's connected. Right. Yeah, right. We just don't want to come in. Is there a place to come in? I don't know. 
like that we can be sure we take care of. If there's something you need to do, I feel quite confident and we need to make a decision to do something to, that we don't have cars on there right now. We, we did just remind you, we did build the, uh, uh, the promenade so it's traffic worthy, but we, we still have some cars on it. And, and even the, the concrete border hasn't been set up long enough. But you're right, if you went off the side of it, you can bust it all over right. the Sure, we'll, we'll take a look at that this week. That's all I got. We does look really good down there. We also put out 800 bales of pine straw. You know that's from 7198. That's uh, our new landscaping agreement. We tweaked a little bit, put more pine straw, and do a better job of weed control. So we're going to put 1,200 bales. We're going to wait until we trim back the. Uh, we'll put nice call. I always forget the name of it. The flowering. Lily grass. Lily grass. <coughs> Once those kind of start dying back, we'll trim those up and put some more pine straw in. Looks good. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up is our city attorney, and uh, let me just say uh, welcome to the team. We appreciate you and uh, look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mayor. All right. I have three things on the agenda tonight. The first of which is the legal services contract between me and the city. Um, Jim handed them out to you. I'd just like to mention that that contract is exactly the same as the one that was attached to my RFQ. And with the exception of I added in the compensation um, provision along the lines of what my RFQ was and what I proposed, and what you guys voted on it tonight. Uh, Clint, uh, you and I talked. Last week about this, but uh, but in the original RFQ, you had a note in there about liability insurance. Correct. So uh, you plan to get that? You already have it. I actually I, I didn't have time to get a bond today. I should be able to get um, excuse me, Charlotte, a copy of the binder by the end of this week. Thank you. Do we get a, a motion to approve this contract, Mr. Mayor? I do believe we do. I make a motion that we approve. Yes, I have a motion for Commissioner Thursby, a second for Commissioner Bazette. Yes, sir. Any, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes by vote. Thank Something you. Thank you. Uh, the next matter um, that I have on the agenda is, as you guys are uh, now aware, that I'm no longer the special master for code enforcement for the city of Fort Bend Hill. And uh, I do would advise, you know, this position is important. It does need to be filled. I would advise that you put out an RFQ and get this position filled as quickly as possible. I'll make a motion that we uh, Thank you, Commissioner Wazir. Yeah. Second. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Ashbrook. Any further discussion? Yeah, why just think. On the quality say aye. Uh, I don't know what. We told everybody we're waiting on you. I know, I'm sorry. You're the man. You're the man with the plan. You're going to be I think that's better. Turn it on now. Turn it on. All right. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, uh, we'll go out for that position now, Jim. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, the last thing that I have on the agenda is an update on the Watley Funeral Home case. Um, where the case stands right now is exactly where it was, but when last reported to you by Mr. Gibson, um, Max filed a petition for writ of certiorari, writ of certiorari asking the court to quash the decision by the board to issue a visit. Uh, the court issued orders shall cause on December 1st, 2016, requiring the city to file a response to the max petition within 60 days. Said response is due on January 31st, 2016. Um, I have reached out uh, to both counsel for both the Watleys and the Max. Um, I have yet to speak to the Max attorney, but I did speak to Mr. Bill Hutto, who is representing um, the Watley Funeral Home LLC in this matter. He has basically indicated that. He had not had a chance to really get into this yet, and he's going to be meeting with his client tomorrow. And he will get back to me as soon thereafter, and we can discuss it. Um, and that's that's where it is. I do have an email out to the uh, Max attorney. I'm waiting for him to get back to me. And at this particular time, I'd like to announce that I would like to seek guidance and advice from this board with regards um, to this case, and the case being. Chad and Lacey Magsy, the City of Port St. Joe, Florida, and the Watley Funeral Services LLC, which is a pending 
case before the circuit court in the 14th Judicial Circuit in and for Gulf County, Florida, case number 1696 CA. The purpose of this request is to seek advice and guidance from the board regarding the matters authorized under section 286.0118. I would request that the city manager, Jim Anderson, and all five of the city commissioners attend this meeting along with myself. And the meeting, uh, and I would request that the meeting be held at the conclusion of the next regularly scheduled city commission meeting on January 17th. And that the clerk be directed to advertise said meeting as required and that the board authorize the clerk to arrange and provide a certified court reporter to attend and record a verbatim record of the meeting. At this time, if the board agree, agrees with my request, I request that the motion be made and seconded to hold this meeting and the vote be held. Also, that if the board votes to have this meeting and that the, that the mayor announce here tonight that we are going to have the meeting, its date and time, the name of each individual person who is going to attend by name and direct the city clerk to advise said meeting is required and provide a certified court reporter at said meeting. Uh, it, would this be considered an executive session? Yes, pursuant to discuss a particular case pending in, in litigation. So bottom line is not open to the public? No, it is not. However, there will be a verbatim recording made of this meeting, which will become a public record at the, as soon as this litigation is closed. I make a motion that we move forward with the request of our council at this moment. Correct here. Okay. And I'd like you to announce that in open in the open meeting when the time, the date, who is going to attend by name, each of the city commissioners, Jim and I, and direct the clerk. Go ahead and get a court reporter and advertise it as required. Well. The only thing I see uh, a little bit with the time is we never know when the meeting is going to end. So, so I mean, we may have to once we set the time or set it maybe a little later. give us a little bit of fudge room, I guess you would say. Um, and that way, I mean, we have to work towards that time if we advertise it that way. Right. That's why I'm saying. We the mayor announcing the time, we're going to have to, uh, have to kind of figure that out. Yeah. Um, why do you prefer to have it after our meeting versus before our meeting? I, mean, I, I just assume that that would be the most convenient time for everyone to get together <coughs> and do it. And it also gives me two more weeks to get up to speed on everything and know exactly what it is that I'm going to be talking to you about. And it will also give me another two weeks after this meeting to formulate the response that the city is required to file on January 31st. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with waiting to him and I'm just about five o'clock. Yeah, but you're an hour. Or we could do it beforehand. Yeah, yeah, either way, either way, either way is fine. Set the time. I think it's probably better to do it before. Yeah, yeah an hour sufficient? I think an hour should be sufficient. So let's so we'll meet at five o'clock on that day? That would be so great. Oh, my motion would be again for us to carry it out at 5 o'clock. Uh, what date is that? 6 18? No, 17th. 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 5 o'clock. You feel good about it being an hour will be done? That would be fine. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion to be 5 o'clock. You just need to name who's going to be there, Mr. Now, I need to do all that right now. Yeah. I'm crossing all the I's, dotting all the T's. Okay. That meeting is held at 5 o'clock, January the 17th. In attendance will be James Bo Patterson, Mayor, be William Thursby, Commissioner, David Ashbrook, Commissioner. I want to call him Mark. <laughs> Fred Lyer, <laughs> Commissioner, and Commissioner Luke Rex is there. And also our attorney, Tim Cahill, and city manager, Jim Anderson. Anyone else that needs to be there? Clerk no, those are the only the clerk only people. Clerk's not allowed to be there. Right. Okay, so be it. Thank you.
Thank you. Hey, that's all you have for us? That's all I got. All right, Jim, we'll go to you. Thank yes, sir. Uh, the first item I have is the 2017 legislative session budget request. We briefly talked on our last meeting. We need to get our thoughts together and uh, move forward a plan for January the 31st submission on there. So be getting your thoughts together. We still have some water projects that could be done, some sewer projects, roads. So get your thoughts together. This past year, we got $250,000 for John Stone's head sewer. So it looks like the sometimes if you go for a little bit lesser project, you may have a better shot. In previous years, we went for big projects in the range of a million dollars, and we didn't have success. So get your thoughts together. We have a meeting Thursday if you would like to attend, where Bashirs, Representative Bashirs, and Senator Mumford will be here Thursday at 5 o'clock. So it may be a good opportunity for you to try to get a feel for how much money may or may not be available. Jim, um, right now I know we've got several projects that are kind of shovel ready. We've got plans made up for it. Yes, I know one of them being the drainage uh, issue that we have. Is that something that would fall up underneath that, or do we have sure. another avenue at this time for it to uh, help pay it? That's one of those that we do not have um, a whole lot of money in the budget for is storm water. So yes, sir, that would be something that could be okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. The next item we have is utility billing workshop. Commissioner Bissett, want to talk to you tonight about it? Yeah, I brought this up a month ago. I, I want to continue uh, to uh, pursue the idea of a workshop just to uh, to educate <coughs> all our commissioners and possibly, not possibly, but I'd like to streamline our process, get us up to 21st century about applying for uh, uh, utility service in the city, uh, how to, an easy way to, to uh, cut off and, and restart your uh, utility service and uh, all those uh, things that go along with, with that service, make it much more user friendly and make it easier for our staff as well as our, our customers. So uh, I would like for us to consider a, you know, an hour at the most workshop. Um, at some point in time, I, I don't know if you want to do it this month or, or next month, but I do want, I would like to have one. So uh, I know we've got third and 17th this month. We've got the uh, next week the 10th for the uh, our DRA meeting. Uh, so, uh, have to put before one of the meetings or something. Uh, February. Well, it's not that urgent. No, I don't think so. I, I think we, yeah, I, I, but I, I'd like to uh, pursue it. Uh, Take a good day. Seventh of uh, that's our first regular meeting. We'll do it before that meeting. Five o'clock on the seventh. Is that the meeting? Can we do it for? Can we give ourselves a few more minutes? Because it would be nice to have the ladies that do this every day here in attendance. And Absolutely. Actually, so maybe five fifteen. Would, would that be a good start time? Give everybody a few minutes to get here. That got to close up. That that's fine with me. It probably limit us to about thirty minutes because folks start coming in to attend the meeting. Not that we. Know, care if they're here or not, but it makes it a little easier if, if we got have a little more time.
got to come for that. Uh, the next item is a reference to pickleball court. Uh, Commissioner Lowry, want to talk to you tonight about them? Yeah, I'm, the more I've spoken to him about this, I'm on just a quick discussion on this. I've had probably three individuals come to me and um, understand pickleball has become a hot sport. Um, and I understand from talking to Jim that it's this board has discussed it in the past, but I think that we probably need to start looking at avenues on pursuing some type of maybe grant funding to, to open up some type of court or, or, or I've had people approach me that play pickleball on the, the tennis courts um, down at Frank Pay. Um, but just wanted to have a small discussion with everybody to see what their ideas were and if you've had the same, I guess, uh, constituents approach you regarding that. That actually in my, uh, my case, we had a meeting with, uh, and, and it seemed like the majority of the folks come from Mexico Beach. They, they've got 100 people show up out there in their park at certain times. Uh, we tried to work something out with them where they could come to town and utilize something we could make for them, and they weren't happy with that. So we just kind of dropped it. Uh, but that being said, if we wanted to, I looked at the Eighth Street, uh, the old Eighth Street tennis course down by the stack house. Uh, had to be a whole lot of work done on the fencing and all that, but I thought, I think you can get three or four pickleball courts on two tennis courts. Mike, is that kind of close to being right? Uh, that, that's correct. I mean, that is parking, though, for the ball field. Mm -hmm. that, that was the well, <laughs> no, but it did, it, it did used to be parking in the ball field. We are always there, so I don't know what. But Let me ask you this. Let me sir. ask you something. Have you, uh, I, I, I'm totally in agreement with you. I think we need to start and do something, you know, maybe just start from ground up. But, uh, you know, there also used to be one over at 16th Street Park. Yeah. And I believe there's still room out there. Yeah. You know, the ball yeah. Does, yeah. I believe yeah, there's I still room that. there. And from the condition of the parking area slash X tennis courts at, at uh, 8th Street, if you get a chance to ride by there and look at that, you just think about that area. Yeah, possibly. I think uh, 16th Street would be. I mean, you'd have to start ground up. Right. For a lot less money, Brett, would it work to um, just put new lines at the tennis courts there next to Capital City Bank? Could yeah. we put two sets of lines and they can play tennis or pickleball? Uh, and, 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 well, I, and you're laughing. And I was I'm, approached. I'm laughing that because when you're when you're playing tennis and you're trying to determine if the ball is going to hit inbound, out of bounds, what, what lines you going to look at? Pickleball. I've never played either of those sports. <laughs> I was thinking I was pretty confused, and that's what I was saying. So, so it's a bad idea to have two sets of lines. I know it's a real growing sport, even around here, because I was in Mexico Beach for the, something that I have, you know, people on court or whatever court they play on there in Mexico Beach. You know, they were playing hot and heavy and just having a real good time. And, you know, yeah. it's just, it's, it's just not in the team out here. We can be 35 or 50, 50 year old guys that really need something to do to help them keep in shape. And, I've been approached about them several times, and I've told them I'd love to get something going. So, and I'd like to see what it would cost to go from ground up just to build one, and, and then see where we have the money first, and then see what kind of way we can see maybe doing it. You know, we get get some folks in the town that don't normally come and spend some time. They have tournaments at other places. Yeah. They have tournaments there and all of a sudden. Is there any room at 10th Street for ground up even after we put the uh, Frisbee Golf? So there'll still be some space that we might want to put one in there. I would say probably 16th Street. Probably think more be better. Um, if people want to play this, they want to be gone and do it for too long. Jim, what? How do we need to go about probably getting some pricing or something on see what it, see what yeah. it would cost? I don't know a whole <coughs> lot of, about pickleball. And, 
Yeah, if we can get some dimension to figure out the court, okay. I guess first we need to decide how many do we want. Do we want one pickleball court, two, four, I'm not real sure. But if we can get the dimensions and some ideas of what we're building, then yes, we can come up with some ideas and practice. So I think that would be the first step, okay. We decide that we're going to build one. Is a tennis court, how many could you get, Mike? Can you get uh, four tennis courts? I think you could do court? five or six on those double so, tennis courts that we have at Washington Gym or at the uh, Cyber Conference. Okay. Well, let us go out and take a look at the site, too, because I know there was a tennis court there, so I'm sure there's still enough room for at least a tennis court, which may be four courts for you. So let us take a look at it. We can, and if you got any uh, specific plans, get with us and we'll pull up the numbers for you. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, the only other item I have under old business, the Commerce Park Light, it will not be closing. So we probably need to turn that back over to our realtor. We've got one today on that. So if it's okay with the board, I will contact the realtor tomorrow and turn it back over to the realtor to put it back up. Uh, uh, do we need a motion on that? That's, if you want to, that would be great. Maybe, maybe we should. I'll make a motion that we give it back to our, our uh, local realtor that we have right now on board. On to new business. The uh, first item we have is under the Chamber app. Ronnie Kopak is here tonight from the Chamber to uh, give you an update. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, I talked to Jim Anderson. He uh, approached me about a, an app for the city, county, area for visitors and residents. So I did some research and uh, what I came up with was our membership information center, the database that the Chamber uses has this program, so it's so can be found. So I do, I do have a little flyer for you guys that kind of explains it a little bit more in depth on, um, because they, they correlate to each other. The Membership Information Center is open up to all businesses in both counties. Um, you, again, the businesses can go online and update their information, their hours, their, where they're located, their website, you name it, they can put it on there. The Chamber app goes hand in hand with it. So uh, I think you get a little printout of what the app's going to look like. This is the home page right here. You guys can see it. Um, so this is what's going to be offered. These are um, business members can go under Hot Deals. They can list any Hot Deals they have, whether there's a sale, if there's people going happy hour, you name it, they can go under there. Job listing, business directory, news. This news area would be good for um, to list commission meetings, times, uh, road construction, power outages, whatever you want. You can put it under the news. The events is your community calendar, and then just a little about section about the chamber. So I just wanted to um, present that to you. Uh, the program, and it is, you do have to pay for it, for everything to put it full rate, oh, let me back up a little bit. There's only three, you see these, these circles? We can only add three more spots to this. So I will, I'm going to present, uh, I sent it to Jennifer with the tourist development, uh, she's going to vote on it on the 10th, um, I'm going to bring it to you guys, we do our Hitchka, um, and then we'll go from there. It, they're not full. So it's it's only open to three people, that's it. The, the yearly price for the app is going to be $1,500 per spot. If you live in 
and then how you want to find the contract. So I'm going to make sure that it's paid for for the user. Um, the chamber membership is going to be included in that price for the reason for you guys to upload your own events, to upload your, um, if you guys have a job posting, a news feed. So if this is this necessary for the app to work. Um, there are two examples that I've listed. You guys can download the little mock apps that they've created. Um, ours actually should go live here pretty soon. So it's just going to remind us those three circles at the top of the public world. I'd like to have everybody signed up by January 20th, so it can be really ready to go February 1st. Are there any restrictions, Ronnie, on what can be put on here? Well, for instance, a uh, nonprofit wants to put something on there, a church organization, uh, that type of stuff. I know in the past sometimes things that I don't know, I just have even ran across the internet. Well, we do post nonprofits. Um, you know, like I said, one thing that I, I ask is that um, you join with the chamber. Nonprofits can join. Um, we have churches. We do advertise for some of the big dinner. Sure. We, we advertise all of that. That's that's, that's a community. Yes. So exactly. And I feel that way too. Right. 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 Um, we did decide to. We were going to upgrade our website a little bit more to the chamber this year, but we did decide to direct the money towards this. We both. Y'all feel that the bow is the way the world is going. This is going to pull out the phone to look up something. So we'd rather direct money that way. Jim and I have been looking, and Jim, if I'm, if I'm getting off base of what we've been looking at, but we've been trying to get some of these kiosks signs in place in the parks and stuff. And Jim and I have been speaking about this. Jim, is this part of what you were telling me? I think, you like could put, I think you could possibly put that. Decided, you could cite it on that um, on some of the uh, kiosks too. That way, they could go to it instead of having ten different things and having to list all the events. They could go to one spot and find it. Um, basically, I believe correct from Ronnie, but basically, what this would allow is anybody in town that's a member of the chamber, they can put their information on this. And then right now, she's not, it's going to be cost prohibitive, I believe, to be able to go out there and open it up um, for uh, internet across the town. But you can actually have a car to be able to go to it to find the website on there. Is that basically what we're Correct. looking at yeah. right now? One of the ways that we're going to push the app, well, a couple of different ways. Um, we're going to put it in restaurants. We're going to print business cards out so that the, the, the little app on it. So it can be passed out with risk, um, the ticket still. Um, property management companies, we're going to give them mag magnets so they can put them on the refrigerators and all the properties. I've already talked to a lot of the property managers already in the building. Um, and then just tabletop cards in restaurants and bars, and that's how our, our, our tourists are going to find it. And then the residents, we're just hoping that it will work now eventually. So. so what would happen is basically you'd have your phone and you'd have your app, you'd have your app stored on here. So basically, I've seen several of the cities in the area, some of the some of the larger best in Pensacola in those areas. Basically what you do is at any point in time, you can match the app, it'll tell you all the events and everything that's going on in town. So if you're planning to go to Port St. Joe or if you're in Port St. Joe, you can pull up the app and click on it and it'll show everything, everybody if they're keeping their stuff updated, every business in town, whether they have a spell lunch special or whether there's a spaghetti dinner at one of the churches, they can pull this up when they come to town and say, hey, I want to go attend that spaghetti dinner or that, whatever that special is in town. Now, Ronnie, with the $1,500, that $500 a piece no, per it's year? it's $1,500 per, per, per each. It's in correlation to uh, the membership information center that we have to pay for through the chamber. Um, it's $2,400 to run that program, and then it's $1,500 to run the app. And then with all the prices of, you know, the, uh, the magnets and things like that. What would our total cost? $1,500. $1,500. And, and per I year. guess, guys, uh, it's so Per year. So it'll be $1,500 per year. Per year. So well, and what kind of one thing, guys, that I noticed and Jim did, too, is like, trying to get the signs redone, redid, and noticed that on one of the signs we have events and calendar events, but they're from 2010. Well, it cost a lot of money to get those signs reprinted, so if we could just basically put app info up there for a website, that people could go to that, and we're not spending money every year to have that sign redone for events. Uh, 
to me. Uh, I think it's a great idea. If y'all want to write and talk about it with each other, and, or not talk about it with each other, but talk about it, think about it, and let's get back We've to it. We've got another meeting on the 16th. All right. Okay. And I, I, I do think it's a good idea, Ronnie. I appreciate it. You don't have to. Okay. Well, it, it'll be on the agenda. Okay. 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 And I would like to add that all the information that's put on this um, goes to me first. So I feel free to, to make sure that there's you know, derogatory things and you know, that the information's correct, the date doesn't say 2010, you know, all that sure. stuff goes to me. So. Okay. Ronnie, is there more than one page to that handout? No, I just did a bigger okay. copy. Thank you. No, I've got it. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the next item we have is the George Core Park rental discussion. Um, as we discussed earlier, we got a lot of things going on in the park, so when you start getting our thoughts together, at some point, do we want to have packages with different items on there for rental? Uh, are we going to start having a, a lot of interest in there in the park? Uh, we've got to start thinking about that because we're redoing the keeper's quarters. We've got the uh, pavilion that's going up. We've got a stage going. So we're going to start getting inquiries. Right now, what we've done in the past, because there's nothing there, we only charged 100 bucks for, for a wedding venue or those types of things. But you're going to have a lot more items down there in the near future. So we need to, we need to start getting our thoughts together. I think we need to revisit that uh, rental schedule uh, for all the city of properties that we uh, think Mike uh, was heavily involved in that five years ago. Stage there. We even in the uh, DRA meetings, we've talked about uh, making it look like a gazebo, like the other gazebo down there, which would, you know, you know folks <coughs> have weddings and have them there. They could uh, have a reception and, and uh, one of the, the Eggman building uh, there at the lighthouse, uh, but we can't give it away for a hundred dollars. So I think it's great. Uh, the next time we have is in reference to free smoke detector program. Uh, John Ford, the fire chief, had, uh, let me know about a month ago. He was notified by the Red Cross. They're going to be supplying us with uh, a case of uh, smoke detectors, pretty much as many as we need from what I was told. So we went ahead and advertised it in the paper that we have it. Uh, basically, all we have to do is have folks sign a disclosure, make sure they're okay with our staff to come in and install the smoke detectors, but they're free. It's a free service we can give back to the community for, for yeah, folks in need. Yes, sir. Dad, you there? <laughs> uh, now, the city uh, employees install them or the Red Cross install them? It would be city employees. It would be guys from the uh, fire department. So, Mr. Turner, if you would, I'd like for you to look at the, that disclosure we have, too, with the, the liability waiver on there to make sure we're, we think we're covered on that. Okay. That's the only thing we need to make sure. Yeah, I think it'd be a good program. Any other questions? Okay, the next item is the FERDAC grants. Commissioner Thursday, want to talk to you tonight about it? Yeah, guys. Uh, every year we can go out. Jim, how many FERDAC grants a year do we get to go out for? One or two? I know we um, have half seen where we can go out for two. And I've seen it depends on the one. areas you go into. You can have one that's, that's mainly in the utility areas. You can also have one in economic development. It's the only, I think, the only two you can have open at one time. But yes, or at least once a year. Well, guys, what I was uh, every year we're looking at fifty to one hundred thousand dollar, one hundred percent grant per that grants. And uh, this past year they've done a little bit of changing uh, with the dates, and I don't know, but I've heard that maybe we missed one in the past. I know we've had some issues. Uh, just to get right to the point, I think that we need somebody that we hire and stay on top of that for us. Uh, I would like for uh, staff to get with uh, Dewberry slash Prevalent Rig and Clay. Uh, I believe we've run it by you, this idea, and uh, I do know that they do it for other areas. I'd like to see us uh, turn our FERDAP grants over to Dewberry, our engineering company. They do it for other areas, and then that way, we're not missing deadlines because every time we miss a deadline, we're, we're potentially missing out on $50,000 free money for our community. And 
and uh, there's a, there's a lot of politics out there. I mean, but you know, so many times it's for the children of our community, which is huge to me. Uh, so, uh, Jim, can you get with Clay uh, this week, and let's put that back on the agenda for two weeks, and uh, that way y'all can iron out what we need to do, and and uh, let's move forward with that. I'd like to see us move. Uh, the next item we have tonight on the agenda is medical marijuana dispensaries. Commissioner Gazette, want to talk to you tonight about it? Yes, I would. Uh, cities all over the state of Florida right now are, uh, well, first let me say this. Uh, medical marijuana is allowed in this state by constitutional amendment and by uh, statute now. So we, we can't keep medical marijuana out of Fort St. Joe. My intent is not to. My intent is to have a moratorium on anything to do with medical marijuana until the, the uh, state agency that's in charge of writing the regulations for the use of medical marijuana dispensaries, the growing and all that. When it was passed, uh, they, they gave, uh, I think, Department of Health nine months to write regulations that's going to govern medical marijuana in the whole state of Florida. So to, to just wait till they get those regulations in place, it, it would be, I think, foolish for us to, to ignore uh, the fact that a lot could happen in, in Fort St. Joe before those regulations are in place that might be a detriment to our city. So that being said, I, I'd like to uh, see if we would direct the uh, attorney to, to write a, uh, an ordinance that would be a uh, temporary moratorium. Uh, most cities in the state are going eight months because one month's already about, just about passed. So uh, an eight month moratorium on anything I think, well, I don't think, I know that we all got a packet from the League of Cities uh, outlining what some of the other cities have done and how they've written ordinances for uh, the moratorium. So I, I would like to uh, see if uh, the mayor would entertain a motion to uh, have a moratorium on uh, medical marijuana for eight months. Uh, it gives us time to decide if uh, we're going to have a special uh, zoning area for them and all the things that, that are going to go along with it. Uh, you know, they, they, right now it's a cash business. They have nowhere to put their money. Uh, there, there are uh, activities, criminal activities that go along with, with that scenario. So there are a lot of things that, that are out there that uh, could happen. Uh, we need to be Proactive. So, uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we direct the uh, city attorney to write an uh, ordinance that would create a moratorium for eight months on uh, uh, medical marijuana, uh, anything to do with the current medical marijuana law. And, uh, I don't the moratorium once we, we do this? Or? I don't believe so. I think it would just be a matter of a vote. Okay. From so what I understand, uh, moratoriums are, are kind of frowned on in the, in the legal circuit. I've heard one year. But so it I'll looks give like you, you might be trying to circumvent the law and right. not allow it to happen at all. Right. And that's not my intent. No, we just don't have any faith yeah, There's no right rules about what, what to do or how to do it or anything else. There's I'm totally no, on board. No idea what to do. So, and that's, that's my reason, eight months. Well, that's fine. I just didn't know why not a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I was going off the nine months that was given to them and making it come out about the same time. Right. 
right. And, and I have no problem with that. that. That sounds fine with me. I just wouldn't want it to go any further down the road and when they do make the rule and all. Because we'll be ready. it was, yeah. you know, it was about 58% of the county that voted for. Yeah. And so uh, once them rules, I think we can do it for eight months, I think it's fine. So we, we can be ready. Can we have our attorney continually maybe evolving an ordinance for us as we learn new things? I mean, don't you think as it oh, goes forward, we learn new things? Let's start writing Absolutely. now. I, I, think, I yeah. think we'll hear about those down the line as well. Absolutely. The League of Cities have been really yeah. proactive. There's <coughs> lots of rumors about the number that are allowed for the population in the county. Yeah. From what I understand, only one in Gulf County. So is it first come, first serve? Does the county get it in Wewa? Do we get it here? I mean, and the league, I think, in the letter of them, correct me if I'm wrong, ask us if we decide to do one to, to uh, work with them or let them know yeah. that they are doing it or something like that. So I think uh, we may want to get joined in the league. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, the last time I had mayor is under Senior Citizen Association. Commissioner Thursby, want to talk to you tonight about it? Yeah, guys. Uh, it's been uh, brought to my attention that the senior citizens that feed uh, a lot of the elderly in our community, uh, they've run out of money for their budget to feed people. And, uh, I think they've got about a $15,000 shortfall. I'd like to make a motion at this time that we take... Uh, Spending your tax dollars. Uh, if I could, Diana, you know anything about this situation at all? Um, Only thing I know, Mayor, is that I'm assuming that's federal or state funding that's been cut. And if that's the case, um, they're talking about the meals on wheels. Um, I don't know how many people she still serves. Uh -huh. uh, if those people are able to cook, there is food available in the food pantry and, and, and they can fix up, pick up boxes for them. Uh, I'm assuming it's federal or state funding because that's usually where they lose their money and put it. Right. Uh, is Mr. Schultz still the director? Yes, he is. Uh, I might suggest that you talk to him and get exactly what that is because uh, that may never be replaced. So they may need to try to rebudget or try to do a fundraiser, try to do something, some other source. But there is food available at the food pantry for folks to sign up for the way that they'll have to cook. It's right. not a delivery. Okay. 
help us to uh, extend the paving? Is that is that correct? Well, right now we've got uh, to do the water, the sewer, and the road uh, in 1.678 million dollars. Right. So we've got about a million of them on there, so we have to be about uh, I think that's for 17 or so the cost of the road. So the idea was to stick the winter shorts in the road line to do the project and close uh, and pave up and down. Right. Or to replace water line. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's the, what we all talked about. So we all wanted to go all the way to Madison. So that, that's going to include paving and parking. Okay. That's going to include the ground. That's what we asked for. Seven million dollars. And this is the letter we sent to Halsey? Yes. Right. Okay. That's right. Up to the board, I, I'm hoping we'll hear some Thursday on, on that package. Let's all try to do that. I know we had a meeting a while back, and I think every one of those guys that did hit them up did hit them up. And I know that uh, Commissioner Lowry's really been working and uh, the angles on that. And uh, I was in sure as assured us, several of us, that he would hand bolt that thing in there. So I feel like that uh, I feel good about it, and I do know that uh, Commissioner Lowry's been really working. Last item was just the Jones County Code Sewer. And that plan that Brent Clinton submitted was to be the state remodeling firm and take the draft of that agreement. They did. I got word today that they are working on drafting that agreement too, so it okay. should be should be forthcoming. Get that agreement back with you. That was all I had for you. All right. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Code enforcement, if you look on uh, page 15, you'll see what's been going on there. Trust everybody to get their weekly things from Richard. Email. Uh, I do just want to mention we got some uh, buildings we're going to be taking down. Right now we only got three, but we got about nine listed to take down. We are looking at three. Uh, one being the birdhouse on the corner there. Uh, the house up there on ABC. Yes, sir. What's the other one? The other one is the house that burned on Robbins Avenue. Uh, we're still working with Waste Pro to see what kind of deal they'll give us as far as you know, taking the stuff out there once we tear the houses down. But that's the main hold up of getting everything done is to get that project. So we're we'll pretty much set to go with three of them pretty soon. Uh, Chief. Few other people with badges on their shirt. Uh, several months ago, I talked to the board about starting our own version of a police explorer program. We're calling it the Police Cadet Unit. We went through a process of trying to get funding. We were, as you, most of you know, we were able to. With uh, we partnered with two local churches, Mount Carmel Baptist Church and St. James Episcopal Church, and obtained a grant through Dupont. Uh, to fund this program. Then we went through a process of selecting eight individuals to be a part of this program. Four of them are here tonight. I'd like to invite them up here. I'll call them out by name. They'll come stand with me. I'd like for you guys to, to get the chance to meet them. They're here tonight. Patterson, right there. One of them. What's that? Don't play basketball there. Might not be that. We wanted them to see uh, how city government operates and meet some of our city officials and everybody else that makes the city run. Um, the, the first person, and we're just going in alphabetical order, is Mr. Addison Burkett. Second is Miss Haley Dennis. Third is Miss Quickly Oldenstone. She's a basketball player. She does play basketball. I just said the name wrong. And yeah, fourth is Mr. Howard Townsend. And we have four other members who are not here today. Their names are Samantha Burkett, Ashton Norton, Josh Richards, and Blake West. Everyone that you see in this room wearing a white shirt, they are instructors, volunteers, they're helping with this program. I'm going to call them up in just a minute. But these young folks showed an interest in law enforcement and public safety. 
So they're going to get to do over the course of this school year a lot of fun stuff. They're going to get to learn about this profession. They're going to get to learn about public safety. They're going to be an asset to the city. They're going to work. This program is going to bless them, and they're going to bless the city. They're going to serve. And if you have a, a project or you have something going on where you need a hand, they'll be more than glad to help you. We'll, we'll get them and ourselves to help as well. Some of our instructors, and I'd like all of them to come up. Everybody knows Sergeant Jake Richards, Officer Jesse Burkett. We have two pastors that are part of this group. First is Mr. Pastor Kenneth Frame from Mount Carmel. Baptist Church, and Reverend Tommy Dwyer from St. David's Episcopal Church. We also have uh, Officer Burkett's wife, Ms. Diana Burkett, who's a volunteer helping with this program. And we have Pastor Frame's wife, Ms. Patricia Frame, who is also helping with this program. And we have, not last but not least, Mr. Jimmy Gaines. So this, this is them. Now we're missing four, but this is all our other officers are helping. Uh, they're not all here tonight, but they're doing different things. We've had one meeting. We have a meeting this Thursday night, and we're just hitting the ground running. So you'll see them around. We're gonna. They'll have a better uniform in the in the near future. So but this is what they've got for now. But I just wanted them to come be here tonight. You to see them, get to know them. Maybe after the meeting, you can stop by and introduce yourselves. Let them stick around for a few minutes afterwards. But I just wanted you to see them and see how far we've come. And, we're expecting great things from them in the just school. That's great, man. Congratulations, Brian. So we look forward to helping them with what you can do. Absolutely. Thank you all so much. Thank you all for volunteering. Absolutely. Mr. Mayor, hey. Commissioners, and the city manager, truly is an honor to, to be in the presence of these guys, not only these young people, but a great opportunity for them to have something to, to look forward to. Not only would it help our city, but it would help them to achieve great things in life. And I believe if we help them from the front end, they'll help them from the back end. So I thank you guys for allowing us to be a part of the city. I think it's we can do uh, everything we can to, to, to motivate them and to get them on the right path and get back to the city. Thank, thank you, everyone. Definitely have our support. Yes, sir. Just want to let you know that our cemetery project to provide benches for people to sit on at cemetery funerals, the pavilion area, is going extremely well. They have been ordered. Probably going to be a month or two longer because of the number of benches, but it's been well received by the community and have, many people have graciously stepped forward to provide seating. Also, just before five o'clock today, Tom Conley, Florida League of Cities, stopped by City Hall and left a return of premium check. So. He was there just, he wasn't going to be able to stay for tonight, but he did drop the check home. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. No, sir, I don't have anything else. All right. Citizens, are there any citizens in the audience who wish to be heard on anything tonight? Any citizens wish to be heard on any, any item? Uh, and we'll go to the discussion of the items by commissioners. Commissioner Thurman, we start with you. All I want to say is that I just want to thank everybody for their support to this board over the past 2016 and I look forward to a 2017 where we can get a lot done for our community, <coughs> our youth, our seniors, and our people in our community. And that's that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Right. Mr. I want, to, I want to thank the Chief for putting this uh, cadet program together. I don't know how many of you know, but since the age of probably 13, uh, I was a Des Moines Police Explorer, uh, and I followed it through to the Assistant Chief in that post, and, and finally got out at 19 when I joined the Military Police Corps. Uh, I, I like to say that you know, this program
program that y'all are in right now completely shaped my life. Uh, got me involved in, in community service, uh, probably politics as well. Um, I'm just, I'm really taken back at, at the amount of volunteers, the adults in this room that are willing to take take hand and, um, and, and help out with this program. Uh, I've been part, part of a lot of other organizations. It's like pulling teeth to get people uh, to help out. So you, you all are involved in this program right now. Uh, be thankful for the adults around you that are stepping up. Uh, it's, it's, it's not as easy as Chiefs making it look. Uh, and I wish you all great luck. You guys are going to love this program. Uh, Chief, if you need anything, let me know. I'll be there. Fight. Thank you, sir. I'll even hit this guy. That's it. Thank you. Right. That's it. Thank you. All right. That's all I'd just like to re reiterate that, Chief. Well done. Good job. I know it takes a lot of work to put something like this together. Volunteers, thank you all as well. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, Clint, welcome aboard. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, I'd just like to, uh, for all of us to uh, up here on the podium anyway, uh, is to think big for 2017. Uh, we started our physical year uh, a while back, but we've got a new calendar year, uh, new ideas, resolutions, and those type things. But I'd like, of course, to, to think of some really big projects. We've, we've got uh, road pavement. Long Avenue, but our roads all over the city are, are pretty pretty bad, uh, and that's putting the mile. Uh, I'd like to see us uh, put some kind of mechanism in place uh, that would would fund uh, road paving projects throughout the city, not have to rely on the uh, county road bond every five or ten years come along. We need we need something where we can be paving some kind of road. <coughs> every year and so I'm, I'm going to be working with our attorney to uh, see if we can figure out ways to uh, uh, have some funding in place or a mechanism to fund uh, road projects uh, the other thing is we got in our email uh, from the uh, folks that were in charge of producing a blueprint for the future of North Fort St. Joe uh, John Henry and his group uh, did a beautiful job. Uh, we all got emails of that. Uh, thinking in, in that regard, we need to think about uh, possibly adding uh, that blueprint to our capital improvement project, our uh, land development regulations, put that in place. It's a great project. It's beautiful. And we need to have something out there to work toward. Uh, that's a that's another big item. I'd like for us to uh, consider, not consider, we already do it, but continue to work with the Fort Theater Group uh, to revitalize downtown Fort St. Joe. And with that, we've got to, we need more uh, down uh, off street parking. And we need to look at possibly uh, uh, purchasing some lots uh, for uh, off street parking. Uh, the, uh, of course, my baby is in the building, as, as you know. Uh, we need to we need to get that thing so we can all be proud of it. And it's falling down around us every day. So please keep that in mind. That's another big project. Uh, uh, big projects for for Dewberry Preble Ridge. Um, you know, we give them projects. They make money. We're happy. They're happy. Everybody seems to be happy. So let's let's think about that. I've, I've talked to Clay a long time ago about the possibility of piping our freshwater canal, uh, which would uh, reduce our maintenance, it would reduce our chemical cost to treat the water. Uh, it's a huge project, it's 17 miles long, but it can be done. And I think we, we need to think big, raise the bar up, and uh, uh, those are a few things, uh, big items big ticket items, but we still need to, we need to keep them on our mind uh, so we can get them done. Right. So uh, that's all I got. All right. And, and I just agree with everything Mr. Bluebeard just said. We got a lot of things we need to look into to make sure we don't miss stuff. The boat on it. Yeah.
And uh, again, all of you volunteers, uh, you young people that are willing to step up and serve your city and, and to try to improve your character, uh, my hat goes off to each and every one of you. And again, we're facing a terrific job that we're going to do up here. We're going to make ourselves proud of the people of Gary City. And, uh, that's all I've got. I need a motion to move. So move. Thank you.